Right now, my brothers and sisters, I am utterly addicted to this game. Now, I have seen quite a fair bit of hate for this game, and whilst I'll say that some of it is justifiable, the majority is probably not. And so I wanted to give this game a really good go before I came to any conclusions. So I gave it it's pretty much a week now. As a result, I'm level 34, almost 35. I've unlocked pretty much everything, all of the different maps and all of the different game modes, as you can see over here. I'm capped out. I'm just waiting for stamina. I've pushed pretty hard with what I have. And so all in all, I've got a pretty decent idea as to what the end game's kind of looking like. And so today, let's talk about Zenless Zone Zero and why I do think that you should give this game a go if you haven't already. I'll cover off a whole bunch of different topics. I'll probably put it on the screen. Uh, I think I think it's this side. And I'll be scoring each section and then and coming to a final score at the end. All right, and so to kick things off, I want to start by giving kind of like a general summary of my experience so far. At this point in time, in this like end game kind of loop, I'm actually quite happy with the game and I'll probably play it for a few more months to see how it keeps going. That said though, that was not always my experience because I would say the first two to four hours maybe, uh, those, those two to four hours like really freaking sucked. And that is probably my first big critique of this game. The main reason that it sucked so hard was because I felt like I was just being handheld a little bit too hard, right? There was just too many tutorials. I was being bombarded with them. And it doesn't really help that they took the style level to like an 11. The UI actually gets pretty confusing at times. And there's just like a whole bunch of different systems. And so the tutorials just, they just felt really endless. I think that the best way to put this is slightly too linear. Now, this is so important because those first few hours form your first impressions and first impressions matter, right? And I got to say by eight hours in, ah, uh, man, I was just like, man, this game is, this game is pretty rough. I'm probably going to drop this. But at this point, it wasn't because of the hand holding. It's actually because of this character over here, or rather the gameplay just wasn't hitting it for me. Uh, let me explain. So there is a beginner banner in which we get an S rank. The S rank that I got was this character over here, Kalita. So Kalita is an S rank stun class unit and she does decent damage. She does great stunning. But for me, she was kind of just like a little bit too slow. I personally did not enjoy this kind of playstyle at all. As you can see, she uses a hammer and a wrench. And so her attack pattern, her attack strings are just a little bit on the sluggish side. And so because she was an S rank and she was honestly performing pretty well, I insisted on using her. But to me, she was just not really fun at all. And so to be honest, that was the thing that really turned me off of the game at this point. The funnest character for me was Billy. And my brothers and sisters, watch this. So this is Kalita and this is Billy. Slide dash, boom, 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 boom. Holy crap. So much freaking fun, right? Borderline ADHD. You know, maybe your boy Tech Tone was a little bit right. This is for much more of a Zoomer ADD audience and for furries, but it is what it is. And so the bottom line is, if you end up with characters that you don't really like playing, it's just not really fun at all. And it's magnified because each of these characters are so freaking different, especially in comparison to your Genshin counterparts, where the combat is a lot more like fixed. It's more homogenous. The tempo for the gameplay in Genshin is almost like it's consistent. It doesn't fluctuate that much. Skill, switch, quick swap, uh, alt, whatever. And this is kind of consistent with most of the teams. Not all of them, but most of them. And yeah, there are a bunch of like free A rank characters in this game, like Ben, Corrin, eventually Sokaku. But man, I was just not a fan at all. All of them like really slow attackers in comparison to this guy. Like look at all this. However, my guys, if you do manage to get somebody that you really like, that you really vibe with, then your experience just goes full 180. And that is exactly what happened to me. I pulled this character over here, Soldier 11. She is just infinitely way more fun to play with. Like, holy crap. She's pretty much like the deluxe of this game. Like you can see me just going like hack and slashing. Like she feels like a swordsman. She feels like she's got like the oomph, the impact, and she's got a little bit of speed. And then after that, I had the chance to play Nekomata, who was so, so much fun because she's like an assassin type character, just super fast zooming around the field. And then I also got to character trial Grace, who is a gunner, super, super fun. She's just sliding around the place quite similar to the Billy. And so it was then that I realized that I don't actually hate the combat system in the game. I just really didn't like how some of the characters played. And to kind of sum that up, because I didn't get a character I liked playing, I think my first impressions would have been like a like a 6 out of 10 or something. But if I had landed like a Nekomata or a Grace or a Soldier 11 from the very, very beginning, then I do think that my first impressions kind of experience would have been at like a, a 7 out of 10. 
at this point mainly because of that early game linearity like the confinedness the tutorials and honestly i talk about these almost deal breakers and i still gave it a score of like six out of ten seven out of ten it sounds pretty high right and so i do want to talk about what really really blew me away about this game it's what mihoyo does best always immersion to be honest i think that a lot of people came into this game thinking that it'd be like star rail or genshin impact like kind of the the premiere action rpg game for the masses but to be honest it is is not not at all because if they wanted to kind of make like a premiere action rpg game they would have just stuck with appealing to the masses like you see this massive shark fin over here that probably wouldn't be there. It wouldn't be ultra urban and retro. Your waifus and husband doors would have like really, really incredibly safe designs similar to Genshin Impact and Star Rail. Like maybe at best, somebody has a pair of cat ears and, and a tail or two. But this time we've kind of gone like full furry, but not only full furry, but robots as well. And that just makes this really, really niche. It rules out a massive audience. And then combining that with kind of like the urban feels and the retro vibes, man, this audience, this target audience is a fraction of what it could have been. All of that said though, uh, this is the part of the game that actually drives the score up for me. Again, because of the immersion and the execution. We all know what they wanted to pull off, right? And I think that they pulled it off so freaking well. The urban feeling, the comfy vibes, the beautiful comic style storytelling. We've got the old ass TVs with that nostalgic sound, the really retro arcade games, the ultra bouncy animations. They had a vision, my guys and they really freaking delivered on it. But the best part of the entire game, in my opinion, is the freaking music. This shit just brings it to life. Like my guys, let me just show you something. Like let's say you're in the TV mode and you're kind of running around. There's music playing in the background and then you hit the mob, you start loading into the background and it freaking transitions you. And hopefully you heard that freaking drop. And so you go in and you're going around, you're just smacking different mobs, like vibe into this freaking music. Like, holy crap. It, it just really like enhances the experience like crazy. It really makes you feel like you're a freaking badass. Like the first time that I heard this music when it freaking dropped, holy crap, absolutely insane. So yeah, in terms of like environment design, characters and NPC interactions, animations, polish, and of course, most of all, in my opinion, the music, all of which contributes to immersion, I would give all of these factors, the immersion factor, a 10 out of 10. Easily, it's easily a 10 out of 10. And to be very, very clear, like even if you don't vibe with this kind of style, which I don't, by the way, I actually am not a fan of this whole urban retro kind of feel, the execution is still pretty much flawless. Now, there have been a few times where I have encountered like text getting cut off, but it's not too frequent. So I think it's okay. And in terms of the story itself, it is like kind of nice. Personally, I like the Star Rail story more. I think most people do, but I think the best way to describe this one is that this time we're not the chosen one and we don't have to go and save the world kind of thing. And honestly, it's a pretty nice breath of fresh air. For that, I'll give it an eight out of 10. The story itself is still compelling despite not being like this Giga Chad OP uh, destined to kind of save the world thing, but it's comfy and it's different. And honestly, I like it. All right, with that said, I want to talk about the end game loop now, starting off with the daily loop. And my God, it is ultra fast, probably the fastest of any gacha I've played. So to do your dailies, you need 400 points. You log into the game, that's already 100 points. All you have to do is go and drink a cup of coffee, which is right here. Skip the scene after you're done, 100 points right there. And with that, we're already halfway done. All you have to do then is walk across the street to the dog who is selling scratchies, do one of his scratchies, which is this one down here, da 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 da. That's another 100 points, which brings us up to 300. And then lastly, all you have to do is look behind you, go into that store, which is your store, by the way. And then there is a bit of a load screen, but we go and set up our shop. This might take like 10, 15 seconds at max, because you have to select like one or two things, but that's done. That's like, that's like all of your dailies done in pretty much under a minute. By far the fastest dailies I've ever seen. The one downside is that you can't AFK it, but my guys, one minute, that's that's like actually insane. And of course, this being a gacha game, there will always be your stamina. However, they do have a stacking system, as you can see over here, in which you can actually do five runs or burn up to 100 stamina every single time. On top of that, your weekly bosses, which is this notorious hunt thing over here, 
they actually don't cost any stamina at all and you can do it anytime. Now, this is really, really freaking nice because it means you don't have to plan your stamina around it. You can just do it at the very end of the week or at the very start if you're not gonna make it to like the next bracket. And so for me, from a kind of like a maintain point of view, I would give this an eight out of 10. Now, it all sounds really freaking awesome. Why would I actually dock two points off of that? And so the reason is actually because of this one over here, Hollow Zero. Now, this is essentially like your roguelike, uh, your simulated universe equivalent from Star Rail. But these runs can actually get really, really freaking long. And if you don't enjoy this system, which is like the whole TV system kind of thing, it's going to be a real freaking slog. That being said though, we're probably going to get to like a point in time where we only have to run this once a week. So I'm not too worried about it. But if you do run this over and over again, which I did, it does get pretty old pretty fast. However, speaking of Hollow Zero, let's talk about the actual gameplay itself. This one TV mode, I think they call it Hollow mode. And so what I have noticed is that a lot of people like they really, really, really hate this mode. To be honest, I kind of didn't really like it at the start as well. I do think that it is pretty innovative and it's pretty unique. However, the execution, in my opinion, was just not it. Because the more I played this, the more I realized it's not actually the concept that sucks. This concept is actually all right, right? But it's the fact that you get stopped like every five seconds with really slow animations. Beautiful animations, by the way, but slow animations. There's NPCs always freaking talking. And so like what should be kind of like a smooth experience is like, it's, it's feeling a little bit jagged. Now, that being said, there are a lot of great ideas that they've kind of like pulled together, like riding trains or even Pokemon battles. But those same like issues kind of persist, right? No matter the design, it just feels really frustrating when we keep getting like interrupted. And so it's for this reason that, especially at the start, I was pretty harsh. I was like, man, this feels like a 5.5 out of 10. But now to be honest, because I'm a little bit more used to it, I would say it's more of a seven out of 10. If they were able to kind of like address those issues, just make it a little bit smoother and make it feel better to play, I reckon that this game mode could easily be an 8 out of 10. And of course, we can't talk about this TV mode without talking about the other side of it, which is the actual combat itself. Now, <laughs> for the first few hours, yes, the combat was pretty easy. I have to admit that. A lot of the mobs, they kind of just felt like they're brainless, like these guys right here, like they're just, they're just kind of floating around, not really doing very much, right? However, what I am finding in some of the later stages, especially in the boss battles, you've got to focus pretty hard to play reasonably well. But in terms of the combat itself, I think it's really, really freaking fun. S to be honest, the skill floor is reasonably low, so you can play it like a hack and slash, but there are like a whole bunch of these different micro optimizations that you can make to kind of take you to like the next level. And so for example, I have this character here, Soldier 11, and her E skill has a massive cast time, as you can see. So what you can actually do is you can E and then immediately swap into a different character to kind of like do other things, whether it's building up damage or like doing days or doing like a debuff. And then after all is said and done, you can just switch back and then keep going. There are some other people who have gone crazy enough to kind of pull off like a dodge as well as a parry at the same time somehow. Like they dodge and they parry kind of on like the same yellow indicator. Like what I'm trying to say with this is that the skill ceiling is incredibly high. There is so much opportunity to master different mechanics and I just find that really, really freaking cool. So whilst I agree that some of the mobs can be a little bit brain dead, the combat itself it actually can get pretty freaking deep. Otherwise, in general, the combat is really, really freaking smooth. The animations are really nice and it's all around like really freaking fun. All in all, for combat, I would give it like an eight out of 10, I'd say, especially after getting to end games, like some of those harder mobs, it's challenging, but like with some practice and optimizations, I can absolutely see myself beating it. Again, your experience, in my opinion, is going to really vary depending on the character you get. For me, Soldier 11 saved my life. <laughs> All right, so that is a lot of scores. So I kind of wanted to give like an overall kind of score. Now, what I will start with is that if you like this game, you'll probably love this game. Nine out of 10, I'd say, right? But if you don't like it, you'll probably hate it, like really, really hate it probably down to like a three out of 10. This game with all of these different factors considered is actually incredibly niche. It's kind of like, you know, racing games or rhythm games, and it might not be for you. And that is completely fine. For me personally, I would rate this game at an 8.5 out of 10. That I am just like not a fan at all of like these more furry designs, like these more like animal, anthropomorphic maybe, or whatever. I'm not into robots. I'm not into like this whole urban kind of feeling either. 
but it's just so beautifully executed that I can't help but like this game. So yeah, my guys, that's kind of it for the game. Let me know if you have given the game a shot and if you did like it, if you did enjoy it, or maybe you didn't and you've already dropped it. That said though, I've got nothing else. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.